Hello everyone, I'm back. I'm recovered from my COVID bout um, and it was actually really, really fine. Um, I thought I was going to get it a lot worse because I do have some um, immunocompatibilities. Um, so yeah, and I literally just had a cough for two days and a bit of a sniffly nose and that was it. Um, so I got off very lucky and I'm very um, appreciative and fortunate of that. But yeah, regardless, I've still had to quarantine, obviously. And because of my immunocompatibilities, I wanted to be sure that what I had was COVID just so I can, you know, relax a bit. And um, I had a few anxieties about getting COVID and stuff like that, obviously. So I wanted to know. So stupid me decided to get a PCR test, which um, was three days after I had a positive rat test. Um, not thinking, or not, one, not really thinking about it, but two, not realizing that I would then have to quarantine for another seven days after I get that PCR test. So I've been in the house for almost two weeks now. And yeah, I figured I would vlog um, because I want to get out of the house. So I figured I would just go to a few bookshops, um, maybe just grab a coffee in town just to get outside because I've been cooped up inside for, like I said, almost two weeks. Um, yeah, I don't think this is going to be a reading vlog. This is going to be a bookish, I guess, vlog. Um, I am reading something at the moment. I'm reading um, Fingersmith by Sarah Waters and loving it. I'm just over about halfway through and it's great. <laughs> I'm really, really liking Sarah Waters. Um, but it's a very long book and it's taking me a lot longer to read. Um, it takes me, how do I make this make sense? It takes me a really long time to read really long books, but longer than I read them slower than I would a short book, if that makes sense, because I don't see the progress happen as quickly through a long book. I tend to not read for as long when I'm reading. Um, so yeah, it takes me longer than it should to read a big book is what I should have said. But yeah, so I don't know if I'll finish that in this vlog or how long this vlog will be, but I just thought I would start it here because I want to get out of the house and I'm going to bookshops, so what better time to start a vlog? <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm going to get going now and I will talk to you soon. <laughs>
Hi guys, it's a few days later now and sorry I didn't check in with you after that little adventure into the city but um, I got home and made a start on one of my assignments that's due and just kept going until that was finished basically and then the next day was spent um, perfecting that essay and starting my next one so it's just been quite busy um, in terms of writing at the moment. Um, I'm recovered from COVID. Um, I'm feeling completely fine, so that is good. Um, but yeah, I just figured I would share with you the books that I bought on my venture. Um, I think I inserted a little, little clip of what I did find, but I figured I would go into a bit more depth just in case they're new books to you. The first one is Chilean Poet by Alejandro Zembra. This is about a man who um, encounters a past love um, in a cafe or somewhere um, and that leads him to reforming a connection and um, them kind of forming this little family with um, the, the woman's son and him um, kind of all joining together as a family and then we see that family break apart again and meet new people and um, it's got a lot to do with uh, poetry and how we tell stories and how we pass on those stories I think so it just sounds really really fantastic. Um, secondly one of the biggest books in Australia at least at the moment is um, Horse by Geraldine Brooks. It's getting a lot of attention on publication day here in Australia and um, I'm really excited about it. It sounds really good. It also sounds like a potential Booker worthy book. I know Geraldine Brooks has either won or been nominated for the Booker Prize before. So um, yeah, so basically it's about, it's set across three timelines in three different places. Um, so we've got 1850s Kentucky, 1950s New York and 2019 in Washington. And basically it um, looks at this horse that existed um, in its real form and its painted form and the people that connect to those different forms of the horse um, and how they connect. And it sounds really, really great. And it sounds like it's got a little bit to do with race and ethnicity and um, all the things that I like reading about. So really, really excited about that one. Um, and then I found this one, which is The Meaning in the Making by Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker is a photographer on YouTube who I follow, who is very, very talented. Um, and now he has um, intrigued me enough to buy his book, but also to buy a new camera. <laughs> I bought a little point and shoot camera for my street photography, which was inspired by him because it's what he has been using. And yeah, so he's a very influential person and a very, very talented photographer. So I'm really interested um, to read what he has to say about the process of making things. Um, so yeah, that is everything that I bought. I am still reading Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. I'm just over about halfway through, if you can see that little gap there. Um, I'm liking it. The way it's set out is there is an event that happens basically. And through that event, you see first in the first part of the book, you see it from one person's perspective. And then in the second part of the book, you see it from an, the other person's perspective. Um, and although that, uh, is, uh, what am I trying to say? It's useful in some parts, basically, 
but in other parts it can get a little bit repetitive because we are just recounting what we've already known and we've already seen happen. Um, so yeah, but we are a past, how do I say this without spoiling it? So we're past the event that happened basically. So now we are getting some new information from the second character. Um, but yeah, really, really great, really awesome explorations on um, queerness and identity and um, uh, class and yeah it's just it's just really really fantastic so far I'm enjoying it and I'm excited to get into the third part because that's just going to be all new ground and I'm really hoping the third part isn't from a third person's perspective who it might be from um, but yeah I'll get into that when I actually get to it but yeah I was just really in the mood for some historical kind of thrillery crimey book stories um and i think it's maybe not as thrillery as i thought it was going to be um for some reason i just had it in my head that that's what sarah waters wrote um but it's not as thrilling as i was hoping but it is still a really interesting story it's taking me a lot longer than it usually would because it's just a very dense book but um Regardless, I'm liking it. I don't resent it yet. I'm not hating it. I'm not bored. I'm still intrigued. I am reading a lot less at the moment because of all my essays that I have to write, but um, that's no fault of the book, obviously. But yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd check in. Um, I will stop rambling. I have to go to work now. I've got work. It's Friday today and I've got work until Sunday. Um, so yeah, I don't know when I'll pick up the camera again, to be honest. I'm hoping, I think I will just dedicate this vlog to finishing Sarah Waters. I'm not going to put any pressure on how long it's going to be. Um, so whenever I finish the book, I'll finish this vlog. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy that. big bags under my eyes. I feel fine. <laughs> um, hello. How is everyone? I am back to check in with you. Um, I've been busy. I've been cooking poffages for the past two days um, at the Adelaide Central Markets. For anyone that doesn't know, me and my family have a business, which is a long-lived tradition. We are uh, We've been cooking poffages, um, which are like little Dutch pancakes, in... Um, Adelaide for about 50 odd years now um, and the recipe has been in our family for about 112 years now um, so yeah it's a really long-lived ongoing tradition which we hope to keep ongoing um, but yeah so we are at the, like I said at the markets cooking poffages we are doing well um, we always do pretty well because we've built up quite a reputation in Adelaide if I do say so myself um, so yeah, that's going well. We're trying a new product this year where we have made take-home DIY kits for poffages. Um, so everyone's really excited that they can make them themselves and have them at home and they don't have to wait, you know, five months to have poffages again. Um, because like I said, we do only pop up at events and festivals and stuff. But yeah, so that's going good. Um, I am trudging my way through Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. 
I'm enjoying it again. I'm back on track as a Sarah Waters fan. Um, I think I said previously that the first part follows one character and their perspective in the lead up to and in a certain event. Um, and then the second part follows another person's perspective of the lead up to and that event. Um, so the second part did get a little bit repetitive in some parts, but it ended great and it was a really cool twist at the end. So I liked that. And I was really, I fin I got to that twist at about 2am last night, so I didn't uh, continue reading, but I um, have been reading today and we're back now at the first person's perspective and where she has ended up, which I can't say because it would literally spoil the whole premise of the book, which I don't want to do. But yeah, enjoying it. Um, I don't really know what it is I'm enjoying about the book, particularly usually there's, you know, some element of imagery or really nice poetic language um, but it's not even so much that I think it's more just the character design um, and the story itself and for once I'm just more into the plot of the novel rather than the language usually it's the language that um, pulls me through a novel but for this one it's literally just the plot um, and the characters um, that are brought in and out of yeah the, the story um, so that's going good I've got about 130 pages left and then I'm done I have read this will be two books this month. Uh, I have just not been reading. Um, I've obviously, like, I've been doing a lot and a lot of reading for uni, but I don't include that in what I'm talking to you about, obviously. Um, but, yeah, it's just been very, very busy reading a lot for uni, writing what seems like endless assignments... Um, and yeah, so I just haven't been reading at all. Um, and obviously on top of that work now, I've got two jobs that are going on at the moment. So that's been taking up a lot of time. So yeah, disappointed in my reading, but July, I'm a free man. As of today, I've got four weeks off uni just to work sometimes and read. So I'm very excited to, um, have a good reading month in July. Um, but yeah. Apart from that, I've been a little bit stressed about a lot of the discourse um, that is up online at the moment surrounding trans people being excluded from um, the Olympics and from professional sport. Um, I obviously do not agree with that, um, each to their own, but I just think that for a community that is trying so hard to identify with a gender that they want to be perceived as and that they feel that they identify with. Um, they're trying so hard to fit in a community and then that community is just saying, actually, no, we're going to other you and separate you and put you in your own competitive team. Um, so yeah, I just always think, you know, what would young trans kids or kids questioning their gender think when they see this in the media and all the people just agreeing with it? Um, yeah, I just think it would be really, really scary for these poor kids. Um, and not even just kids, you know, people that are in their early adulthoods or late adulthoods who are only just coming to terms with their identities. Um, yeah, very sad. So I've been arguing with a few people um, who are portraying a lot of ignorance um, online and that's been stressing me out, but I'm trying to let that go. Um, apart from that, I've given myself a break from reading and I'm trying to set up my Notion account. I don't know if anyone's heard of Notion. I've only just became familiar with it recently. My brother told me about it. He's really into coffee making and he uses it to document his coffees. <laughs> um, he's a barista and he's um, really into like roasts and certain roasts and certain... There's the whole science behind it and I have no idea. Um, but yeah, I figured he, he suggested it to me, obviously, because I've got a lot of things on my plate. I'm a uni student. I do YouTube. I write. I read. Um, and it's great for all of that. So for anyone that doesn't know what it is, this is Notion here. Um, and it's basically just like... So this is all the stuff that I've got in my little list here. And yeah, it's just... The thing I'm having a problem with, so if I show you here, is the freedom 
um, with which they give you to create your page. So if you press slash, it gives you all these options of things that you can create on your page, like toggle lists and quotes and links to pages and call outs and tables and headings. And I think, excuse my massive pile of washing. Um, I think that because it's given me so much freedom, I have no idea where to start. Um, I've seen, I've looked at YouTube videos and I've seen a lot of people creating these really nice and aesthetically pleasing um, pages and they've got it set out in such nice creative ways and um, really efficient ways and I'm just struggling. All my pages are just boring and white. So if anyone's used Notion, um, let me know and give me some tips because I'm stuck. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm going to tackle it a little bit longer um, and then probably do some more reading. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd check in. I think I've just told you a whole life story in seven and a half minutes. So um, sorry if that bored you to tears, but there was a lot of things I wanted to say. Um, yeah, hopefully I'll finish this vlog and this book. I'm so excited to re finish this book now. I just want to get onto something new. Um, before I finish, uh, my, my main goal is to not resent this book. I don't want it to take me too much longer because if it takes me too much longer and I'm reading it in July, which would be a massive problem if I am, um, I'll resent it and I don't want to do that. Anyway, tangent. Um, yeah, I don't even know what I was saying now, but <laughs> um, yeah, I want to... I can't remember what I was saying, so I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, I'll check in with you, I guess, soon. That's what I was saying. I want to finish this book soon so I can finish this vlog soon. So hopefully in the next few days I will do that um, and check in with you when I've read um, a significant amount of the book. Hi everyone, it is the next day and I've read more of Sarah Waters and I'm still really, really enjoying it now. I think I've only got about two chapters to go and then I'm done. So I'm very excited. <laughs> to be done um, and I'm excited to talk about it at the end of this video um, but today I have to go and get a flu vaccination because there's a flu going around in Adelaide that is actually worse than coronavirus so that's fun um, so yes I'm going to go get vaccinated now and then I figured I would catch the train up to Blackwood and go to Blackwood Books because it's one of my favourite secondhand bookshops um, it's just a maze of books in there and it's um, I always spend quite a long time in there and I always walk away with something so yeah I figured I would make a day of actually having to get out of the house rather than just going to get vaccinated and coming home again and wasting a whole day off um, so yeah let's see let's see what happens um, I will check in with you on the journey or perhaps after the journey but Regardless, you'll see the journey. <laughs>
Hello everyone. As you can tell by the shadows covering my face, it is now night time. Today has been a very long day. And yeah, it just, it, where did it go, really? Um, I didn't get vaccinated. The vaccination clinic was closed, so I didn't technically even need to leave my house today. Um, but and having said that, I accomplished a lot. <laughs> if, you, if you consider um, book purchasing an accomplishment, I know I do. Um, but yeah, so I ended up running into a friend for lunch and then I um, went to the bookshops. I had to get a train to the bookshop because it's up in the hills, in the Adelaide Hills, well, south of the hills. Um, and then I went back to the city and I ran into another friend who I went to a bookshop in the city with. So yeah, it's just been a bit of a bookshop tour day, really. Um, but yeah, I just figured I would share with you what I found. I'm very exhausted. And I don't know, I feel like every time I have the day off um, and then I have work the next day, I always think, do I stay home and do nothing and veg out and enjoy doing nothing? which I hardly ever enjoy doing. Um, and I did that yesterday. <laughs> um, or then I think, do I go out and make the most of my day and exhaust myself, um, which I did. And no matter what I choose to do, I always regret not doing the other thing. Um, so yes, I'm exhausted. But anyway, I figured I would just share with you the books that I found because I found some really exciting books um, today. The first one, was in a second-hand shop, Tommy Waringa, A Beautiful Young Wife. Tommy Waringa is a Dutch author, um, and I'm in the process of collecting Dutch literature um, for a Dutch reading project that I am planning, um, which I'll be filming a whole video soon for. I'm just waiting on a few more um, books to arrive. But yeah, this is translated by Sam Garrett, and it's about a man named... Edward, who meets Ruth, they fall in love, hence the beautiful young wife title, and I think it's all about how having a baby changes them and changes their relationship and how that can um, be detrimental to a relationship sometimes, considering the mental state of certain people. Um, so yeah, sounds interesting, not like it hasn't got me written all over it or anything, but it sounds like I could enjoy it and... It's a Dutch author, so that's um, enough for me. Next up, I found The Autobiography of an Ex-Coloured Man by James Weldon Johnson. That was a mouthful. I heard a lot about this author while I was studying black literature last year at uni. Um, apparently he's inspired a lot of other black authors. Um, and this is just about a man um, switching between Jacksonville and New York, going to nightclubs and... Um, colleges and apparently he um, is very pale skinned so he almost passes as white and it's about how he fits into all these settings as a man who doesn't really know where he fits into his community um, or how he fits into his community so it sounds very me it sounds like I'm going to love it um, so I'm very excited to get into this book and I'm really really enjoying that cover it's really satisfying. Next up I found an Andrew Motion poetry collection. I feel like I've heard about his this poet before and it could be that I've even got one of his poetry collections that I found in another op shop one day on my shelf. Um, but I couldn't go past this cover first of all. It's got like a almost corpse-like hair doing a massive leap on the cover. Um, and my rule for poetry is to open it up to a random poem and if I like that poem I purchase it if I don't I put it back this time I opened up to the first um, the first poem and I read the first stanza and it was enough so I'm just going to read that and instead of trying to find out what this poetry collection is about so the poem is called The Dancing Hippo and the first stanza reads like this in my country we are not good to animals a dog is a dog however it might sit up and beg or run through fire and a bear riding a bicycle still wants to eat you. I think you can see from my lack of illusion I have some experience. 
So when I tell you this story caused me distress, do not ignore me. Um, yeah, I mean, give me an anthropomorphic animal in poetry and I will buy your collection. <laughs> um, that sounds really, really fun and I'm super excited to get into this one. Um, and in fact, maybe I'll even read it after I finished Sarah Waters, Whew, which I'm still reading by the way, um, because I need to get my <laughs> my count up for this month because I've only, I'm only going to have read two books after I've finished Sarah Water. Um, yeah. On that, I didn't read anything today at all. Um, it was a long day of just train journeys and I was listening to music. I downloaded Scribd because I thought, oh, maybe I'll listen to some of Fingersmith on the train journey. So I downloaded Scribd, paid for a subscription and they didn't have it on there. Only the PDF file of the book. So, yeah, and I wasn't going to read off a tiny little screen. Anyway, let's continue the haul. Um, I found this, which is comes with a bit of a backstory. I saw this mentioned on Greg from Supposedly Fun's channel. Um, he mentioned it in his uh, Pride Month TBR, and I was obsessed with the premise straight away. Um, it's about a man living in Ireland who his family comes home to him because he is very ill. He is dying from AIDS. Um, so it couldn't sound like an, any more of a me book really. And I'm super excited about it. Someone who I've been meaning to get into for a very long time. So yeah, very thankful for Greg for pointing that book out to me because otherwise I probably never would have known about it. Um, so yeah, I will leave his channel. If you don't know who that is, by the way, I will leave his channel linked down below. Um, he's great. And he, um, speaks a lot about queer literature, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, but yeah, continuing on two new books that I found, I found Hex by Jenny Fagan. Um, I'd never heard of this book. It's brand new. Um, it's about a witch who is in prison um, and then she is visited from another person in jail who claims that she is from a, the future where women are still persecuted for who they are and what they believe. Um, so witches and feminism sounds great. And again, I, you can't even see that it's got pages in there. It's that thin. Um, so yeah, I might even try and get these two at least read by the end of the month. So then I've got something to talk about at the end of the month, apart from Sarah Waters. Lastly, I found Bowler by Patch Tim Statovsky. I read his book, Crossing. Didn't like it. Um, there was elements of like a man cross-dressing um, and towards the end, there was a suggestion that he did that to receive the benefits of dressing up as a woman and presenting as a woman, which I found a bit icky, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't know if I read it wrong, but I still didn't like that I, that's what I got from it, regardless. Um, so yeah, and I wasn't really just a fan of the book generally either, but this one <laughs> sounds more me. Um, this one is about a um, man in Albania, I think, um, and he is gay and he meets this man who he falls in love with, but they're in the midst of war and they're not supposed to be gay, they're not supposed to be in a relationship, so... I think you guys can see a theme for the books that I really gravitate towards. Um, I'll give him one more chance, and if I don't like that book, then maybe he is just not for me. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would share with you those books. Um, like I said, haven't read any more of Sarah Waters. I plan on reading a little bit tonight. Um, and hopefully finishing that off tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, I figured I would film this and then just check in with you when I have finished it. <laughs> so then this vlog can just end because I'm sure this vlog is just ridiculously long by now. Um, but yeah, I'm going to make them dinner and watch Drag Race. So I'll check in with you after I have finished the book. I did it. I finished the book. <laughs> I'm so happy. I really, really liked this book, I will say. Um, it was 
really well plotted. The characters were so well designed and so memorable. I never once struggled, despite there being such a large cast of characters, I never once struggled to um, remember who anyone was, even if they did come back um, after a long time being mentioned. Um, so yeah, I really liked that. Like I said, I'm not going to remember any specific lines or any, any specific language or imagery about this book. It was more just the plot and the characters that drew me through. And yeah, I think it was successful. Um, definitely not going to be one of my favourite books of the year. I don't think it's that memorable. Um, I mean, I mean, it is memorable, but I don't think it's going to be one that stands out when I'm looking back at my reading year. Um, even though I did spend probably the most time I'll spend this year with a book um, on this book. And yeah, I'm not too sure why it took me so long. I think it was just a mixture of being really busy and just, I don't know. I think with historical fiction especially, I'm not always so excited to get back into the story. Um, and I'm not too sure what that is, but I was watching someone's video who recently read The Secret History. I can't remember who it was. Um, Benjamin Journal. I'll link his channel down below. Um, he recently read The Secret History and it reminded me of my reading experience of The Secret History and how quickly I read it. I mean, I read it in a week, which isn't quick for a lot of people, but it was quick for me. But this took me three weeks and The Secret History is 100 pages longer than this book, so that's really interesting. Um, but yeah, like I said, loved it. Um, Really strong elements of lesbian relationships, um, feminism. Uh, and it's basically just about a girl who agrees to, um, on this proposition that is put towards her from a professional con man to um, help him steal a well-off, or well, a rich girl's inheritance, basically. Um, and there's, betray there's betrayal, there's lies, there's a madhouse for women. Um, so it deals a lot with, um, you know, feminist ideas about how back in these days, a smart or an educated woman was perceived um, and how an educated woman could be, um, I don't know, just, just the, the backwards thinking towards an educated woman back in these days that <laughs> unfortunately still carry through to um, a lot of elements and ideas today um, but yeah really really enjoyed it um, I did just quickly want to mention as well that I did get into this and finished it on a few journeys to work on the train and I really 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 liked it um, I think Andrew Motion is a poet that I'm really excited to explore more of now um, I tried to find just any information on this poetry collection online. And I'm pretty sure this was his first poetry collection and I just happened to find it. Um, Cause I can't find a single thing about it. There's two reviews on it on Goodreads. Very, very minimal information, um, but I loved it. There was a poem at the start that looked at, um, oh, it was very emotional. Firstly, it was just his experience in a Catholic um, upbringing and school and then I explored his relationship with this young boy um, who was named, I can't remember now, Jonathan, that's right. And yeah, it just goes into Jonathan's sad, unfortunate death. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was just a lot of beautiful poems in this book. Um, obviously like many poetry collections, um, there's some bits that aren't as strong as others, but I still really, really liked it. But yeah, that is the end of this vlog. I am very happy to wrap this up and I'm very, um, scared of editing it and finding out how long it is, but thank you so much for watching. And I need to wrap this up now because my battery is flashing, but I appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next vlog. <laughs>